I think it's a movie that's going to truly move the needle on so many different levels. And I'm hoping that it's one that's evergreen, that lasts forever, and that people will just kind of be able to always go back and look at and get a sense of feel good from it. Excuse me. She's been like crying for hours. Sorry, but this is a group for new mothers. On that sign out there, it says parents. I'm a parent and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. This movie is so touching and sweet and had everybody crying from the minute we saw the trailer. What was it like bringing Matt Loglin's story to life? I got the opportunity to, to act out a real story uh, and, and what an amazing story it was. I was able to check a lot of boxes with this one. I was able to portray a black man on the big screen in a positive light as a father, which is something that you don't see much of. You know, we're always the drug dealer or we're in jail, out of jail. We're gone. We're just coming back. Uh, I mean, it's the same thing over and over again. So to have a story that was grounded, real, and, and one that people would be able to walk away from with a sense of positivity, it felt good. It felt right. Also, just to do something that I think it uplift and motivate fathers to understand that, you know, we're needed. There's, there's a value to having us. And what an amazing value it is when the job is done right. Is she in this, mommy? Yeah. She's in there. She's in you. She's in me. She's in... She's in whoever she touched. Having Matt and... Maddie actually be able to come to the set. What was that experience like to have them see what you were putting out there about their lives? Well, it was great. And also practical in practical terms, it was great to ask him questions. And he was able to chime in. I said, got any thoughts here? You know, um, he's a great guy. And eventually, I think once you've made a certain number of films, it dawns upon you that you're spending a large chunk of your life making movies. So you know, there's the product of the film itself, but there's also the experience of making it. So these relationships, whether with the actors or with somebody whose memoir, whose life story it is, mean a lot. Like it meant a lot to me. It means a lot to me that I'm friends with him. And it meant a lot to see him with Maddie. Matt is such a nice guy. What I loved about watching him and Maddie on set, watching us shoot things, you could see their heart was filled. And I thought that was so kind of like cool to see it. I love how happy they were. And they would thank us, right? Thank, thanking us for doing this movie. And I thought that was really cool, man. Like, oh, wow. Like, I guess it gotta be feel great to see like your story come to life, you know? So I was glad Matt was impressed. Dewanda, I know Lizzie, you're playing a person who's in our industry, who's, you know, someone you could also turn to. So what was it like having them as a part of this process? I'm like as big a Bob's Burger fan as you can get you know, when I discovered, like, I'm like reading the book, I'm reading Two Kisses for Maddie. And I, I thought when I read the script that Lizzie Swan was just a character device, I thought it was just like a plot device. And I was like, oh no, she a real person. And once the trailer came out, you know, Matt Lodgelin like commented on one of my IG posts and he was just like, Lizzie, this is a beautiful iteration of you. And it doesn't get better than that. To tell the true story and to have the people you're representing feel represented it does not get any better than that. I don't know how you're gonna do this. Mm, mm, mm. If you could have only one parent, I wish you could have had your mom, because she would have been better at it. What was it about either reading Matt's story or reading the script that made you want to sign on? The call that I got was, it's a Kevin Hart movie, and I went, yes. <laughs> do you want to hear what it is? No. I just like to be, be playing with Kevin Hart. So that was the first appeal. Then I read the script and it was beautiful and touching. And, and uh, I thought we could have a lot of fun. And my, my role originally was written as a little bit more of a hard, you know, bit of a tough jerk boss. And I thought, well, it's not going to be fun. You have Kevin Hart. Let's see if we can change it and be a little bit, have a little more fun with it. It'll wipe you out. Do you have solid poops yet? No. No. Nope. It's a big jump. When you get to solid poops, it's not a picnic. Okay. So we changed the script a little bit. And then Kevin and I, we sort of played. And, and uh, it was, you know, as fun as I was hoping it would be. And the movie is beautiful. I mean, he's just so good in it. It's not a surprise to me, but I think it might be to a lot of people like, oh, he can do anything, can't he? Absolutely. I think this movie is really going to highlight just uh, what a range the guy has. I mean, he, obviously he can just make anyone crack up. But this movie shows that he... You know, he brings a lot more to the table emotionally. And when I first read the script, I was like, I'm not going to lie. I cried. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, there's something here. I'm a joke, okay? Matt, this 
you're not a joke. Maddie's doing great. She's moved up to the 60th percentile in weight and 70th in height. Look, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but your wife would be very proud of you. Working with Kevin Hart to, you know, craft this script to be, you know, something that is, is also personal to him. Where did you start with the story of fatherhood? So I was given the memoir, uh, Matt Logla's memoir, and also a lovely, well-written script, um, which had not been written for Kevin. Um, and I knew that they were talking to Kevin and Kevin was interested in doing it. Um, and that made me want to do the movie. And then we met and I said, okay, what's fake here? What do you not believe? What should I add? What do you want to bring from your own experience to this character that I haven't brought here? So from the get go, he was involved in the creation of the story and which is fantastic in order to get at the emotional core of things and at the comedy, like I like it if they're able to improvise. In a shorter term, the same process with Laurel Howery, who had a massive amount of input into his character, like sort of him cursing in G-rated fashion in front of the baby and <laughs> trying to put together this crib. You acting like a dumb mother fudger right now. Don't cuss at me in front of my child. I right? didn't cuss, I called you a mother fudger. Why are you saying fudge? Because that's a baby right there. I don't wanna curse in front of the baby. So why not just choose another word? I did, fudge. On Matt's side, it was making sure that I do his story justice. You know, he, he put this on page years ago. He wrote a book. Uh, and, and that book was was written to heal. That book was written for him to express and get this out there and possibly help other other people who are going through the same thing. And shockingly, there's so many that are that that have experienced something like this. And this shines a light on that and makes the hospitals like, OK, wow, maybe we're not doing something right. Maybe we need to make sure that we're doing our part in protecting these women that that desperately need to be looked after while having a baby, after having a baby, all of the above. When it comes to the Maddie's lullaby scene, which felt very three men and a baby yeah. for me, uh, where did that scene come from? <laughs> Probably three men and a baby. <laughs> I just like seeing those three guys in the frame together. Go to sleep, Maddie. Maddie, go to sleep, Maddie, go to sleep, go to sleep. Maddie. It's not working now. Maddie, go to sleep. Maddie, go to sleep. I love that shot coming up through, uh, through the crib and to, to us. And that was fun. That was just us just winking it, man. Just having a good time. That's why, like, if you see the blooper reels of that scene, it is crazy. Like, we just start yelling random stuff. And one boy just yell, go to sleep. Your daddy said go to bed, Maddie. Your father is tired. That's not abuse. Yeah, that's not abuse. That's borderline. But that's why I love Paul Weiss, man. He was so open to just like letting it roll, man. And I had so much fun. It was one of the funnest movies I've done. Well, let me ask you this, if I may, Anthony. In, yeah. in the Three Men and a Baby analogy, yes. who are you? Are you Steve Gutenberg? I mean, you... I like to think of myself as a, as a Steve Gutenberg, yeah, you know, for sure. I thought you were um, going to go for Tom Selleck, but okay. Well, I, don't, I can't grow a mustache, so that's just <laughs> out. That's not a possibility. <laughs> When you think of like iconic TV or movie dads, who's the first person you think of? I remember as a kid, the Dick Van Dyke show looked like, well, parenting looks fun. This kid comes in, says something funny and walks away. How hard can that be? That's not what life is, but it sort of looks good on TV. Maybe a horrible, horrible person to choose. But I kind of would, if I can choose both Brian Cranston from Malcolm in the Middle and from Breaking Bad, I feel like between the two, most dads will kind of have a little bit of both. A little but bit of a disaster and a little bit of just kind of like a hilarious, hilarious guy. But keep in mind, in Breaking Bad, he did it all for his son. He did it all for his son. Yeah, so he did it all for his family. You could say that's just yeah. good parenting. I know he's not a TV dad, but Obama was our country's dad for eight years. You know, that imagery, it just makes sense that Obama signed on to produce this movie. It was like an ushering us into this moment where we're like, oh, yeah, that's black fatherhood. Ralph, how about you? Is Fred Sanford. Like, people never mentioned Fred Sanford as a TV dad. And he had a grown man staying with him. His son was about 40 years old. He let him stay at the house. He still had a job for him. He always had his back, no matter what Lamont. Everything he still did was for Lamont. He was trying to pass the junk business down to Lamont. People sleep on Fred Sanford. That was a, he was a dope TV dad. John Amos, he talked about good times, right? Yeah. And he, they respected him. And yeah, he was tough but they all knew why it was out of love. Yes, they're characters, but they play a major part of just influence on our youth as we're coming up because it's what you see and it's what you identify with. For me, it's, it's what you would not just laugh at, but go, that's cool. I, I can only hope that 
as I continue to progress in my career, people see just how serious I take fatherhood. You know, perfect I am not. But one thing that I don't play games about are my kids. I never have and I never will. So, you know, my involvement in their life is a must and forever will be.